previously on Riches to Rags. It was nowhere near as busy as it used to be, and I expect it was because my DJ Hacksaw Jim Duggan had stopped playing any music and was just now yelling. <laughs> Not only did he have the best music, but his name was Dixon. Dixon is in fact Norman Bates. Despite looking like a crack den, I actually quite like this place. I mean it had boobs, 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 a stepladder, boobs, 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 this miserable old bitch. What's it gonna be? And a laptop. Hello YouTube. Bacon soda! I got bacon soda! Bitch! Bitch! Trolls sweeping the whole place! On the first one on the Yeah, yeah, yeah! Do you remember this guy? He had now changed his name to Fonzon Ian. in that vault and sniff around for whatever else they have tucked away down there. You might find something we can use to our advantage. Gold! Always believe in your soul. Gold's gonna be slower to haul out of there, but it is oh so shiny. <laughs> and we're back. There was one elite challenge in the casino heist that I had not yet completed. So after Tom Jones and I completed the preps... And then with Fonz on Ian joining us for the finale, we were ready to go. That's either really smart or really stupid. Okay team, head inside and you'll be on the main floor. Just smile normally, dear. You look like the village idiot. <laughs> Come on. Stop making that thing with your denture. I'm not. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Cheese, Cheese and, and crackers. crackers. Whoa! Oh shit! Happen? Not again! Just run, Carol! Oh, my Knowing that there is nothing more intimidating than masks resembling fruit, they set about shooting everyone in the face. Another successful heist and a handsome bonus for completing all of the elite challenges. I completed more bunker sales and some more Malcolm powder sales and I was now really starting to rake in the cash. One thing that I was lacking in was my character's strength stats and I thought a good way to boost this was to beat up my own car. But this didn't work so I tried beating everyone up. 
This was all still taking far too long, so I thought I'd try some golf. Seeing as it was my first game, I was quite pleased as I had ranked the mighty 2,310,303 in the world. But still no stronger, I then took on this tryhard at a game of tennis. After a slow start, I soon got the hang of it and started kicking his ass. And after my four straight wins, he did what all tryhards do when someone beats them. He left. I then gave punching homeless women a go. But soon got bored and just accepted that I'd be a weakling for a while to come yet. On my way home, I popped by to deliver some cheese to Gerald now keep your mouth shut about me, you hear? and took on this week's time trial. <laughs> Stole myself a nice new Mercedes and a new haircut to represent my new wealth. How you doing? After Lester had given up my home address to some yokels, I then got a surprise visitor. Hi there! <laughs> yeah, welcome, welcome! So glad you could make it. <sighs> ah, now haven't we met already? Last time I met Trevor, he said he'd have a job for me, and he was true to his word. You all now have jobs in a startup! This is it! Trevor Phillips Industries! I am not a drug dealer. I am not a pusher. We take the drugs that already exist in America and we add value. Sounded good so far, but I was too focused on how Trevor could say these words while his mouth clearly said something totally different. We will be borrowing a couple bricks of cocaine from some juiced up frat boys on a yacht off the coast. Then, we are gonna beat the Vagos. Now, our guys do pick up and trash trucks, and so... We're gonna get the meds, we're gonna get the pills, we're gonna get the cocaine, or we could get the pills, the meds, the cocaine... Ah, fucking whatever! You're gonna get it? You're gonna bring it to Ron, and then we're gonna fucking get moving! The team for this heist was goth rock wannabe Dio, expert driver Pesca, and this gay porn star, Fist Al. To steal the coke, I first had to get bummed by Dio. And the only way to get him to stop was to crash into this lamppost. I don't know what it is, but since I've become famous, lots of people see me as a religious figure. But seeing as they were religious, I sent them all to see their maker. After collecting all the coke and Pesca ignoring the instructions come this way, we completed setup one. That's perfect! I wasn't here. I was very much here. For setup two, the best tactic is to park a couple of Batmobiles at the pickup locations. Jeez. For collecting a trash truck. The security guards are their people, so I'm in the Yeah, take them out before you take the truck, alright? With pickup one completed, pickup two meant hopping in a Batmobile and blowing up every red circle on the map. Pick up three without the Batmobile was just as easy. Now's my trash truck. You gotta take it to the gas station on Supply Street for the final collect. And the final.
final pickup was as easy as your mum in her 20s and after she split up with your dad. When we got back to Ron, he was clearly excited about getting the marshmallows out of some rubbish bags. Okay, good. <laughs> we got the molly. I'll keep on moving. Come on, away from here. Go for it. They see me rolling. They hate it. I've got some silenced weapons in my garage for you, so head here first. With my fagio now out of action, I took Pesca's much slower Batmobile and then beeped the horn to let everyone know that I'd arrived. I then crapped my pants with fear of drowning as we couldn't get out until we'd reached the bottom of the lake. Three hours later. When we arrived at the lost camp, Pesca went in like a bill in a china shop and ruined the mission because that's what Pesca does. Don't rush it! Whatever you do! I think Pesca alerting everyone may have been because of this giant yellow gun that she was using. Probably not the best for a stealth mission. Once we had located the vans, it was just a peaceful drive back. After delivering what we thought were drugs, we found out it was just a portable blue toilet for Ron. I don't shit on my doorstep unless Trevor tells me to, but that was only once. What I'm trying to say is that I only rarely shit on doorsteps, and when I do, I don't want the doorstep owners finding out. But ironically, the impotent rage figure was filled with Lister's Viagra. Okay, it's too late to save my marriage, but, you know, I got it. When we arrived back at the apartment to talk to Ron about our next mission, he told us all about Dweeby GT clickbaiter, Mr. Boss for the win. He suffered a lot. He's not the horrific, bloodthirsty maniac that we all imagine he is. Well, well, he is, but he's got a gentler side. He loves his mother, who likes animals and children. Anyway, after this, we'll all be rich, and you can get to know him better. Eventually, Ron told us what we needed to retrieve for Trevor's okay. new garden he was having built. So you're going to the lumber yard in Paletto Forest to pick up some grass. Now, it's a whole lot of grass, and it's well protected. Two of you, with guns in the hills, and two of you on the ground. You're going to get a whole lot of shipment, and you're going to get out of there. Ground team will be driving the shipment out. Gun team will be protecting it. It seemed like a lot of effort to go through just for someone's lawn, but then I remembered that this is GTA 5. Trevor will be in touch if there's a problem. Go fuck yourself! How you doing down there? It's out now! Remember, two of you are getting in the vans, and two are getting in that pickup with the gun. Myself and Dio had arrived and already killed half the enemies, but because Pesca was driving, her and Fist Owl didn't make it in time, and... So we restarted and respawned without our cars. Yeah, thanks guys.
when we picked up the trucks, our gun team of Pesca and Fistel, of course, decided not to protect us and just drive on the train tracks, leaving me to kill everyone by myself. The gun protection team was so rubbish, even Trev advised me what I should do for the next heist. Check your friends list. But we finally managed to drop off Trevor's law. Man, I can smell that grass like ten minutes ago. One was so happy with the grass that he couldn't help but tell us what he was going to do next. Masturbate till dawn. For our last setup, we had to murder a load of O'Neill brothers before stealing their tanker. I then spotted this on the map and said to everyone, Right, there are two enemies right next to the tanker, so don't use any missiles. Then you can guess what happened next. Thanks, Pesca. So, yet again, respawning without our weaponized vehicles, thanks, Pesca, we had to rely on these trucks to deliver the tanker to Chef. Up. No, Chef, we didn't. Just a tanker. Okay, we're good. Get lost. Bye. Introducing brand new merch from Beatsdown Gaming. For just £99.99, .99, you can own a Thanks Pesca t shirt or a Dark Eclipse Die t shirt. They come in a range of sizes from Skinny Dwee Brophy 1322 to Fat Bastard. Order now, as limited stock available. Advertisement number two. When we got back to my apartment, we were met by a freaking out Ron. Oh, this is bad. This is. This is very, very, very bad. Someone may have told the Vagos, and the Ballas, and the frat boys, and the Lost, and the O'Neills, told them all where their stuff is. If you want to get paid, I'd get over there. Quick, don't let him kill him. Seeing as the Lost really wanted their lawn back and would kill Trevor to get it, we had to go and rescue his dumb ass. Despite doing this mission before, and me telling him again where to go, Fist Al still managed to go the wrong way. Ah! I then advised him to go slow around this corner. And then said the same thing to Pesca. Thank you, people. Thank you. Great work. Really great. Here, here is what I promised you. To be honest, I wasn't very pleased that our pay was a bag full of Trevor's used wank tissue. But Fistow was, and he said he would sniff them in his next movie. Now let's get the hell out of here, all right? I got the buyer coming through. Thank you. You can't be impotent rage, because I'm impotent rage. Out of nowhere, someone claiming to be Trevor's long lost relative arrived. My brother. <laughs> Yo, yo, it's Phil. It's uh, good to meet you finally. Hey. Trevor, ain't it? Considering that they look nothing alike, Phil told him that all his relations have birthmarks on their willies. Yeah, I have them. Good. Can I see? 
not wanting to get his willy out in public, Phil showed Trevor a picture of his willy from his suitcase. Mm. 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 All right, we're going to have a circle jerk. Now, if their willy's proven, the Phil told Trevor all about their mum being a filthy whore. Excuse me? <clears throat> why, why do you keep saying that? Hmm? Now, fearing for his life, Phil called the cops, so Trevor threw his Viagra pills at him. With the cops being American, they started randomly shooting everywhere. It then dawned on Trevor that throwing his Viagra at his brother Phil meant he may never get an erection again. Lester got word that this was one of the worst high schools ever and rang me to talk about working with these noobs. You can predict that they'll always go wrong. <laughs> you should stick to working with professionals for a while. And now it was spinny wheel time. After all of my grinding and heist, I had a healthy 4.8 million sitting in my bank account. So join us next time when I block this arsehole and I get myself a broomstick with homing missiles. In the next episode of Riches to Rags. <laughs>